good. You're keeping keeping it going. Just chatting with Melanie Bannister from Sylvan, learning uh, about the Blue Jays game. You were too busy working to watch the game. You've learned that lesson. Speaking of learning, tomorrow, five o'clock. Yeah, all right. Blue Jays. Yeah, I made note of that. Yeah, good one. Well, thank you for coming today. Uh, thank we you are for talking me. about um, helping your kid with math, and that doesn't mean sort of sitting him or her down and going, memorize this. This is the way you need to do it. Yes. This is a very cool idea to make your kid understand math by using nature. Talk to us about that. Absolutely. Um, math can be very practical, and kids are doing math every day without realizing it. So when you start connecting it to the, for them, it becomes more real and it um, has more meaning. So you can go out into nature, take a walk. You can you know, observe, collect data, think mathematically, and then when you come home, take that data and then discuss it and talk about the different kinds of trees and how many were there or go out in your backyard and you know look at spiders in the backyard and see how many are growing in this section and how many are growing in this section. Quadrants, and look at you yeah. go. <laughs> and Holy. then talk about why more might might uh, be spinning webs in one area than in others. So it's as simple as that. It's like they don't overthink it. You don't need to take the textbook with you. You take a pencil piece of paper, maybe a ruler, mm -hmm. and you can literally head out to Pacific Spirit Park and go, oh, let's measure the mushrooms or great example especially at this time of year when they're really coming out um, you can take them and you can you know plot out use your little measurement the string that you brought and do a little plot and say how many are in this section and then um, take pictures make drawings and then classify them you know how are they the same how are they different because that will come up a lot in math classification um, how to compare things how to sort them into different uh, groups and then you can take that information and even make a bar graph out of it or or make a circle graph and you know if your child's hesitant to do something like that then use the computer because com you can plug in the data and the computer will create those graphs for them and they can see how is a bar graph different than a circle graph that type of stuff is going to be coming up in school all the time and kids don't realize when you're saying okay what are the differences between these mushrooms or what are the similarities they don't know that they're actually doing math when they do it or if you see something cool like you said the spiders or if you see some little lizards or yeah, same thing. You can look at how are they the same? How are they different? Why Why do you think they are different like that? Talk about the different sizes things come in. Um, so for lizards, uh, you can even use distance, speed, uh, look at magnitude, size. How, you know, how far away is Gross Mountain? How high is it? How far away is Mount Baker? How high is it? Right. What, how about Mount Everest? How high is Mount Everest? And doing the math yeah. makes it fun. Show the pictures. Use the computer. Exactly. Uh, leaves falling everywhere. We can also talk about Symmetry. Yeah, great time of year to talk about symmetry as well with all the leaves on the ground. But lines of symmetry are a line you can draw through something and then one side is a mirror image of the other. So this turns up in nature all the time and uh, I was watching the segment on pumpkins. When you're carving the pumpkin or drawing the pumpkin, talk about the line of symmetry of a face. Uh, and so it's in leaves, it's in faces, it's in insects. Uh, it's great and it will turn up and in grade nine my son's doing rotation so they do rotation around the line of symmetry so it's going to be out there many times in their lives of math really <laughs> applicable for all ages as well if anybody's struggling with math one of my favorite things to do with brady is getting from point a to point b yes. i'll say how fast are we going here's how far the distance is how long is it going to take us to get there absolutely you can start simple when they're young with how far away is the park? You know, how long is it going to take if we walk? Mm. What how about if we bike ride? Yeah, how right. many footsteps? And then as they're getting older, you can talk about time distance rate because that's going to turn up in math. It's going to turn up in science. How many times did we get that question? If two <laughs> trains leave the station at the same time yeah. and are traveling at, yes. So we're preparing our kids with math. We love that yeah. creative way of doing it, doing it in nature. Thank you, Melanie. Melanie You're Bannister welcome. from Thank Sylvan you. Learning. We'll see you again soon as you Sounds good. help us navigate the school year <laughs> once again. SylvanLearning.com is where you go for more information.